ஹலோ எவ்ரிபடி திஸ் இஸ் டாக்டர் பிரவீன் செல்வம் எம்டி இன்டர்ல மெடிசன் ஃப்ரம் இசிஜி பிஎன்பி டாட் காம் டுடே வி வில் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் த இசிஜி சேஞ்சஸ் இன் ப்ரெக்னன்சி திஸ் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் இஸ் கம்பேர்ட் ஃப்ரம் வேரியஸ் ஒரிஜினல் ஆஸ் வெல் அஸ் ரிவ்யூ ஆர்டிகிள்ஸ் வேரியஸ் சேஞ்சஸ் இன் இசிஜி அரேஸ் டியூரிங் ப்ரெக்னன்சி டியூ டு ஹிமோடைனமிக் சேஞ்சஸ் ஆஸ் வெல் அஸ் ஹார்மோனல் சேஞ்சஸ் ஸோ லெட் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் த ஹார்ட் ரேட் வி ஆல் நோ வெரி வெல் தட் ஹார்ட் ரேட் இன்க்ரீசஸ் டியூரிங் ட்ரைமஸ்டர்ஸ் இன் ப்ரெக்னன்சி ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் த பேஸ்லைன் ஹார்ட் ரேட் in the first trimester is around 86 whereas the baseline heart rate in second trimester is around 96 and in the third trimester it is around 1 or 2 beats per minute why this heart rate increases this occurs due to decrease in vagal tone and increase in the sympathetic tone further in the last trimester the gravid uterus compresses the ivc as a result the preload will get decreased which means the stroke volume will also get reduced in order to compensate for the cardiac output the heart rate will increase let's see an example ecg if you note this is an ecg of a female in the first trimester you can note that the r wave here and the r wave here are clearly seen and the number of large boxes between these two r waves are 1 2 3 and 4 if you apply heart rate formula heart rate is equal to 300 by number of large boxes between the two r waves so it comes to 4 here which will be less than 100 so in the first trimester the heart rate is less than 100 however in the third trimester if you look closer between this r wave and this r wave the number of large boxes are 1 2 or 2.5 so if we apply the heart rate formula it is 300 divided by 2.5 which comes more than 100 so what we have to remember is the heart rate rises serially during pregnancy trimesters and in the third trimester it could be well over 100 also the next change we are going to discuss is the pr interval we all know very well that pr interval gets shortened during tachycardia you can note that the pr interval here which starts from the beginning of the p wave to the beginning of the qrs complex if there is no q wave it is the beginning of the r wave which is normally between 120 to 200 milliseconds gets shortened in pregnancy which means the pr interval can come below 120 milliseconds so the second change is shortening of the pr interval then comes the third change which is the deepening of the q waves you can note that the q waves are not deep here but the q waves are deep here this deepening of the q wave is seen more in lead 3 the exact reason for this change is not so clear this is the most important change which we have to discuss the first thing we have to understand is the gravid uterus pushes the diaphragm up as a result the heart itself tilts towards the left side more than the usual the normal axis is between minus 30 degree to plus 90 degree suppose our patient has an axis here during the third trimester the axis may shift more towards the left by 30 degrees to 50 degrees this is usually a tilt however in certain cases this tilt could be very high that there could be a frank left axis deviation which could be observed in these females so in this example you can see that lead 1 is positive and lead avf is positive which is normal axis and in the third trimester lead 1 is positive and lead avf is negative which pushes the axis towards the left side so qrs axis change is also common in case of pregnancy especially in third trimester and there is also a slight reduction in duration of the qrs complex 
which will be evident in the third trimester also. The next change is about the QT interval. The normal QT interval during the first trimester is around 420 milliseconds and in the second trimester it is around 435 milliseconds and in the third trimester it is around 450 milliseconds. This is maximum values which I have taken. So we all know very well that the QT interval starts from the beginning of the Q waves to the end of the T wave. You can note that the QT interval gets prolonged in the third trimester. The next change is the ST and T changes. These ST and T changes in pregnancy are very non-specific. This occurs due to the increased excitability of the myocardial cells to estrogen. You can note that the ST segment is slightly depressed here and there is a T wave inversion which is very minimal. If you progressively observe these T wave changes, they are not going to deepen. They will remain at the same depth and they will not revert back to normal till termination of pregnancies also. So, this is a persistent mild T wave depression and mild ST segment depression. You have to rule out other causes of these non-specific ST and T changes like anemia as well. Next comes the arrhythmic changes in pregnancy. The most common changes are VPCs and APCs. You can note that there are ventricular premature complexes which arise as couples as well as isolated manner whether it could be a bigeminy or trigeminy or does not have a pattern at all. They also arise due to increased excitability of the myocardial cells. These are also common in pregnancy. And the least common but more dangerous thing is atrial fibrillation. In the research papers which I have read, there is a possibility of atrial fibrillation in 0.7% of pregnant population. So, this has also to be kept in mind. There are certain warnings which have to be kept in mind while reading an ECG of a pregnant patient. If there is a change, the symptomatology has to be clearly asked. A detailed history is mandatory. If there are symptoms, then it has to be progressively evaluated. Further cardiac evaluation is must. If there are no symptoms, then the patient can be serially followed up. You should exercise utmost caution in reading a pregnant ECG. In case you are a person who is interested in ECGs, you can check out our ECG BNB app, which is the easiest way for ECG literacy. This app is available both for Android as well as iOS users. For Android users, you can type the name ECG BNB in the Play Store and download the app. And for iOS users, you can download the Class Plus app and enter the organization code which is shown in the screen. Once you log in, you can find the course ECG Alpha which is present in the store section at the bottom. In this course, entire ECG content is broken down into levels and sublevels. Each sublevel will contain an explanation video in short and crisp format followed by class notes for easy revision and practice ECGs to solve and relearn. Apart from that, the striking feature is that all your doubts pertaining to the course content will be personally clarified by myself or from the members of my team through the chat support which is available 24-7. You can post the ECG doubts which you come across during your day in the chat and we will try to solve it for you. In case if you are a student, you can get the course at 70% off. If you find these type of dedicated ECG content interesting, you can subscribe to the ECG BNB YouTube channel for regular learning. Thank you and until next time, it's bye from ECG BNB team.